There's buzz about a potential sales tax increase to fund school repairs. That's among the stories you heard this week on WGLT. I'm Ben Howell with News and Review. Unit 5 has around $50 million in necessary facility updates and repairs that need to be done in the next five years. It's scrambling to find the money to pay for it. School board members are talking about creating a one-cent sales tax to fund school facilities. Member Amy Roser says whatever they decide, it needs to happen fast. We have a roof that we need to replace this summer, so we have a, a bill, so we have a clock that's ticking. Any countywide sales tax would need to be approved by the voters if a majority of school districts across the county approve putting it on the ballot. Unit 5 is also proposing a more than 9% increase in its property tax levy for next year. Chief Financial Officer Marty Hickman says the owner of a home valued at $225,000 can expect to pay about $240 more because of rising property values. He points out that overall tax rate is decreasing. From 529 last year to 507 this year, and that is also largely in part to the increase in the existing property value plus some new property value that came on uh, during for 2024. An official vote on the levy will come next month. Bloomington City Council voted to leave its levy flat next year. That's the second straight year the city has passed up a chance to capture some of the growth in the community without raising tax rates too much. City staff had recommended a hike to contribute to fire and police pensions. Council member and mayoral candidate Cody Hendricks says the city should try saving money elsewhere before raising the levy. Maybe this is the year that we can weather some of the storm, pay those pensions out of general fund and see where those efficiencies come through for next year and kind of make that determination of what we do with the levy then. It leaves questions about the city's budget future if it keeps losing ground to price increases. Normal City Manager Pam Rees says the town has had good conversations with stakeholders about a proposed ordinance to discourage large-scale pop-up parties. Rees says the limit on the number of people who can assemble in public and amplified audio are the major concerns. So it's basically getting an understanding of, of how people interpret our original draft ordinance and how can we modify it accordingly. The town started to hold meetings with community groups after a big pushback to the initial ordinance. The state of Illinois is facing a more than $3 billion budget deficit next year. Republican State Senator Sally Turner of Logan County calls that frightening. She says the state will need to cut its way out. I'm hopeful that we can go back to uh, having a good balanced budget and not one that's on the backs of the taxpayers. Turner says the state should drop its health care for non-citizens, but didn't offer many specifics about where to cut, saying Democrats aren't being transparent about how things are funded. IDOT says crews are making progress on the big Market Street Road construction project on Bloomington's west side. As Ryan Denham reports, there will be more work to do after the winter construction slowdown. The $9.3 million project is patching and resurfacing one of the community's busiest streets with over 20,000 vehicles every day, along with improvements for pedestrians. They've run into some delays, like waiting for utilities in the area, gas lines to be moved. But project implementation engineer Ken Crawford says a big milestone is coming soon, the reopening of White Oak Road by the end of the year. We ask that you just be patient, obey all the traffic signals, understand that this is going to create a better situation. New traffic signals will go in over the winter, followed by paving in the spring. Crawford says they hope to be done by the end of May. I'm Ryan Denham. Beloved Illinois Wesleyan University theater professor John Ficka has died. He taught 46 years and part-time for another decade after retirement, mentoring generations of students. Among them is Oscar-nominated and Emmy-winning actor Richard Jenkins, who credits IWU for the making of him. The belief that maybe I could do this, and that a lot of that's responsible for that is uh, John Spicker, who was the head of the theater department there. He was very encouraging. So I credit him a lot with that, that feeling that I had when I left. Ficka also wrote plays and was involved for many years with the Heartland Theater Company in Normal. He was 95. You can find more about all these stories on WGLT.org. I'm Ben Howell.